Hello everyone and welcome back to the finals of the 2020 Chessable Masters. It's uh, again Magnus Carlsen versus Anish Giri and after four games of Rapid, uh, the score is a tie and they have to go into uh, uh, Blitz playoffs. Now the first game of the Blitz section ended in a draw and this is now the second game of the Blitz. So if, th if this one also ends in a draw, then we go into Armageddon. Magnus with the white pieces opens with uh, E4. Uh, or does he? No, he doesn't. I'm pretty sure it's a d4. Yeah, he opens with d4. And, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, he opens with d4. I have no idea what just happened. Uh, but before we check out the actual game, uh, Huga released another chess song called uh, Endgames, the Bloody Endgames. Uh, I'm sure you all know which song it is referring to. And the lyri lyrics to the song were written by none other than former world chess champion Vladimir Kramnik. So do check it out. Uh, the link will be the first thing you see in the description below. Now, getting back to the game, after d4, uh, we have knight to f6. Uh, so Giri uh, replies with knight to f6. c4, e6. Uh, we have knight to c3 and uh, Giri goes for the Nimzo Indian defense, as you always should, with bishop to b4. Uh, Magnus goes a3, immediately challenges the bishop. We have a trade here and c5, we enter the Samish variation of the, of the Nimzo. Uh, e3, uh, we have knight to c6 uh, and now bishop to d3. Just uh, fighting for the e4 squared, nicely developing the bishop. We have d6 uh, and knight to e2 now. Uh, going for uh, going for knight to g3 and now as white allowed it uh, Giri immediately strikes in the center with e5 he kind of he kind of provokes d5 so he can go e4 uh, which would be which would be very nice because you either kick the bishop back and uh, get the e5 square for your knight or you get some nice trades in uh, even even the price of a pawn for example bishop captures knight captures 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 and uh, okay it's not even at the price of a pawn but it would be would be very interesting but uh, all of black's problems uh, go away you don't have to worry about any uh, how to develop your light square bishop or anything you can go d5 in the future if you want you have a nice b file for your rook so uh, everything is nicely set up so instead magnus goes knight to g3 uh, and now h5 giri wants to kick it away with h4 and now there is one game in the database where d5 was played but here magnus goes for h4 he prevents h4 by black uh, and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game and now uh, queen to e7. Uh, the white king is still in the center, so it does make sense to develop the queen. Also, maybe some uh, captures on d4 will be possible. So here is where Magnus uh, closes the center with d5. And here uh, he's uh, basically challenging Giri to go e4. And uh, this uh, this idea does come with, with a pawn sacrifice. For example, if you go e4 here, then, uh, for example, uh, you can go bishop to b1, and now after knight to e5, uh, yes, you've cleared e5 square for your knight, but now you have to give up this pawn, and after captures, captures, and captures, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting position. For example, if bishop to g4 now, f3, yes, you have to go back, but, uh, you know, the, the white's position is, is a bit shaky, and you could have uh, a lot of counterplay here uh, with the black pieces, as it is, it is a blitz game. Uh, so here, instead, Giri went back, knight to b8. And this is, uh, well, uh, we do often say that the hardest move to find is a move with the knight back, but this is not one of those positions. So here, uh, Magnus immediately goes e4. He doesn't allow e4 by Giri. And now, bishop g4. Okay, we have f3, bishop goes back, and now bishop to g5. And if you look at black's position now, uh, you don't really have a good developing move. Like, where are you developing the knight? How is the rook getting into the game? Where is the bishop going? All of the all of the squares are taken from the from the black bishop. Like, it's not it's not ideal. And what's worse, it's a blitz game, so you don't have a lot of time to create some sort of an elaborate uh, plan of how to develop your pieces. So here, uh, queen to c7. Giri immediately unpins. Uh, and allows uh, the capture on f6, which Magnus goes for. So we have captures, captures, and Magnus just castles. He's not afraid of the open, semi-open g file, as that rook is pretty much stuck guarding the pawn. And even if you could, like, sacrifice the pawn for some activity, uh, Black still has to develop his queen side to even consider attacking. So, knight to d7. Uh, and uh, here Magnus doesn't want to give Giri any, any free tempi uh, to, to try and develop, so he strikes with f4 right away. The king is still in the center of the board, so it, it does make sense. 
Uh, we have e captures on f4, knight captures on h5 now, as now the queen also guards the knight, uh, and knight to e5. Giri grabs the e5 square for his knight, but now uh, he also gives up the f6 pawn. Y you could try and not do this, but uh, if you allow captures and uh, for the queen to come into the game, you are losing the f6 pawn either way, so it's not really... Uh, that big of a deal. So knight e5 by Giri, and now knight captures on f6. With check, king to d8, uh, and now rook captures on f4. But now uh, Giri goes back with knight to g6, and now it attacks the rook, and also there's a double attack on the h4 pawn here. Saying that, okay, if you go back, I'm just gonna, gonna capture here, and now it's uh, actually not, uh, not all that bad for black. He opened up some files for the attack, he's gonna develop the light square bishop, he's gonna... Um, try and get this rook into the game somehow, but well, uh, my my phone is listening to what I'm saying. That's that's not cool, man. Uh, and uh, yeah, it would be it would be a good position for Black. So instead of moving back, Magnus just goes knight uh, queen to f3. He gives up the exchange, saying I would like to keep my pawn on h4 and I want to mount an attack here uh, along the f file. And Giri says I'm not I'm not touching that. Uh, well, you could grab it, but uh, he, he, he doesn't want to take it. Uh, and But it's not all that easy to decline it. For example, if you go rook captures on h4, rook captures and knight captures, just uh, queen to h5 is sufficient here. And it's the knight is under attack, the h8 square is uh, under attack. Uh, and if you go back, knight g6 to guard both and the h8 square, now there's e5 coming. And just uh, the entire position just falls apart for black. So knight captures on e5 is probably what we would see. Queen h8 check, king e7, and now let's say rook f1 defending the knight, threatening queen to e8 checkmate. And uh, well, black is out of options here. You could try and defend it with queen to d8, but then queen h4 and all of these squares are taken. Uh, nasty discoveries are coming and black will fall apart here. So it's not easy to decline the rook uh, by, let's say, playing that, which we've just shown. So Giri declines it with queen to e7. He still doesn't want to take it, uh, but uh, now Magnus forces him to take it. He pushes h5. And now there is no r good square for the knight. You kind of do have to capture it. So knight captures, we have queen captures, uh, and now uh, the queen guards the knight. The knight nicely guards the h5 pawn. So queen e5, offering a queen trade. Giri is now up the exchange, uh, however the passed h pawn is a passed h pawn, and Magnus gladly accepts the queen, uh, the queen trade. We have captures, captures, and now g4, defending that h5 pass pawn, and also the knight guards the g4 pawn, so everything is nicely defended. And Giri plays the absolute strongest move here. He goes for a5, he wants to play rook to a6 and get the rook in uh, to the game to help out uh, with uh, the, the defense along the 6th rank, and also there could be some nasty plans for black as well. So here Magnus goes g5, now uh, the knight is also nicely defended, and rook to a6. And here is a very, very interesting position, even though it's a blitz game uh, for them, but for you, you can pause the video, of course. So feel free to pause the video here. What do you play here for white? Just give it some, give it a think and uh, try and try and figure it out while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that you do not want black to give back the exchange. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the star move is bishop to e2 actually, because what you want to uh, prevent is rook captures on f6. And it's not a difficult move to find, but it's a difficult move to find in, in a way that you have very little time on the clock when you're actually playing the game. And now you have to calculate what happens after rook to b6 and do you want to allow black to infiltrate here. But as you know, this is a video, so I, I am going to show what happens. So let's say rook b6 going for rook to b3 to go after some pawns here. King f2, uh, white starts bringing the king into the game, now rook b3, and now comes d6, that's the that's the point, threatening d7, and if bishop captures rook d1, uh, just attacks the, the bishop and it's lost, since there will be a dub double attack now. So black would have to develop, and now a4, uh, preparing to move the rook, and yes, you, you do lose the, the c3 rook, but now rook b1, and now the rook is coming to b5, for example, king c8. Uh, rook b5 and now you are just gonna gobble up all of these pawns and we'll have a very nice game. So that's uh, kind of what happens here after this rook to, rook to a6 if bishop to e2 is played. However, uh, you don't have a lot of time on the clock, so Magnus instead played rook b1 first. He doesn't want to allow uh, this rook to come to b6, and also he wants to just bring his rook to b5. But now he allows Giri this, uh, well, move that really, really uh, gets rid of uh, Carlsen's uh, basically uh, trump card. 
So here rook captures on f6, just getting rid of that uh, knight. We have g captures and rook captures on h5. So Giri gives back the exchange, however, he gets rid of the past h pawn. And now again, uh, we do have a game. So rook to b5, Magnus now gets what he wanted here, attacks here. Uh, the a5 pawn and the c5 pawn and now rook to h3. Giri also wants to go after some weaknesses here. We have bishop back to e2 and now rook captures on c3. Magnus captures on a5 and now we have rook to e3 uh, attacking the bishop also threatening the e4 pawn. Bishop to h5 uh, and now rook captures on e4 and now the very interesting not bishop captures on f7 but rather rook to a8 with ideas of captures bishop e6 going after the bishop here. So here, uh, Giri doesn't want to play something like rook captures on c4, allow this, and, and then have to deal with this. He first uh, goes king to c7, he unpins, now the bishop can move. Uh, but now, again, feel free to pause the video and win this game for Magnus while I, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting tactics even in an endgame. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's d6 check. Now you try and get the king away from the defense of the bishop. Of course, Giri declines the offer with king d7, but now bishop captures on f7. And it's not, not uh, all that easy for black to find moves. So here, Giri tried rook g4 check, king to h2, and now rook to f4 going after the f6 pawn here. But again, uh, Magnus plays the absolute strongest uh, and the only winning move, uh, king to g3. And the reason why king to g3 is incredibly strong, because now uh, bishop to h5 will be followed by bishop to g4. The king will be defending the bishop here, and then it's just uh, game over. So here, rook captures on f6 was played. There is nothing better. Bishop to h5, and now uh, rook to f4. Again, but it doesn't really matter. Yes, you do go for the c4 pawn, but bishop to g4 is coming. And you don't really have the option of giving up this exchange now, uh, since... Black still cannot move. This is just terrible. This is this is a light square bishop. Uh, you you do not want to have like ever. It's just uh, just a big liability for for the entire game. So after a bishop to g4 check, Giri finally gave up this bishop, and now we have bishop captures on c8. We have rook captures on c4, and now bishop captures on b7. And now if Giri could get rid of this a3 pawn, he could have some drawing chances. Uh, however, uh, that's much easier said than done. So rook c3 check, king to g4, but the a3 pawn is now guarded. Giri starts pushing his pass pawn, and now bishop to e4, guarding, uh, not allowing the king to, to go anywhere near, blocking this pawn as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, rook to c1, making room for the pawn to start uh, marching forward, but now uh, rook to a5, preparing rook e4 check, maybe uh, a lot of possibilities here. So rook f1, cutting the white king of the game, King g3, we have rook to f4, going after the bishop, bishop to f3 now. We have rook to d4, and now king f2. Of course, Magnus wants to bring the king uh, as close as possible, rook d3, and now bishop to e4. Again, challenging the rook, rook to b3, and now king to e2. Getting closer into the game, rook b2 check, we have king to e3, rook b3 check, we have king to d2, and now king to c7 by Giri but now just a4 by Magnus. And now we have king to b6 attacking the rook, but now rook captures on e5. There's not much you can do here. Rook to b4 going after Carlsen's pass pawn here, but now bishop to c2 by Magnus. And it was in this position on move 54 that Anish Giri resigned the game and uh, with it the match. As uh, this was game 6, uh, the game 5 ended in a draw, so Magnus wins the blitz section and with it the match. So we do not get Armageddon in this match, and Magnus is the winner of the first match. So we have a second match today, which Giri has to win uh, if he wants to force match 3, and we of course are all hoping for, for Giri to win, as we do want this uh, final to, to go on as long as possible. Uh, but yeah, here you resign as it's very easy to continue. King c3 is coming and after that you just don't have any moves. Let's say rook b2, king c3, and there's a double attack. Okay, you can go for rook a2 guarding the pawn. Uh, but just you can go rook b5 check. Uh, since the king cannot capture, you have to guard the, the bishop here. But after the king moves just rook c5, you're going to capture the pawn next. This is nicely defended and there's nothing much to look for here. So yeah, after bishop to c2, Giri resigns, and we continue today with the second match. And after this, uh, Magnus, of course, tweeted, as you know, he 
has the tweet when when he's playing Giri, and uh, it is also the reason why I chose the title of this video. However, uh, I cannot help you uh, regarding what it actually means. He, Magnus says the second try. Some you win, some you lose, and he tagged Giri, but uh, S O me uh, is uh, with, with a capital S and the capital M. However, I have no idea what what this means. Probably some sort of a clever joke, but I was unable to figure it out. If any of you guys have some insight uh, as to what what it could be, uh, do share in the comments so you know I can I can also uh, enjoy what it actually means. Uh, but yeah, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank da David Chervinsky, uh, David Pierce, uh, Kirill Stoymanov, uh, Emil de uh, and uh, de Decaree, and uh, Thomas Connors for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the finals of the 2020 Chessable Masters, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do check out Huga's song. Link is in the description. See you soon, guys.